Hello, everyone. My name is Francisco Munoz Alvarez. I am the founder and CEO of CloudDB. I'm here today to talk about does cloud mean the end of the DBA and about the evolution of the DBA career with the help of emergent technologies. A little bit about myself. As I mentioned, my name is Francisco Munoz Alvarez. I have been working with database technologies basically for 30 years now, or just over 30 years. And most of the, the, this time working with Oracle technologies, but also working with many emergent technologies, other RDBMS such as SQL Server, MySQL, open source databases as MySQL 2 and many others, Postgres, and also a cloud-based environments with basically our cloud vendors around, around the globe at the moment. And with regard to with Oracle, I have been working and I've also been a beta tester since the Oracle version 7. I have won a few awards around the world, including an uh, Oracle Excellence Award, an Oracle Magazine Editor Choice Award, and also an Oracle Ambassador as an Oracle Ace Director. And I, have been pres I have presented over 460 sessions at 48 countries around the world already. I haven't been traveling and speaking in conferences. Uh, I've been invited for the past 12 years. My blog is oraclenz.com or oraclenz.net or oraclenz.org. All these domains take to my blog. And my email, if you have any questions, is alvarez at cloudDB.solutions. And my Twitter handler is at COMunus. You can contact me via email or Twitter, it's not a problem. Also, please feel free to contact me, uh, follow me on Twitter. I always uh, promoting uh, free documentation, uh, tutorials, webinars, and things happen about the, uh, the database technology and cloud technology around the world. Uh, in the right uh, corner, you have my bo book, Oracle Database to C Backup and Recovery Survival Guide. was the first book to be published about this topic when the Oracle launched the version 12C. Uh, also, right now, uh, writing a book for 2A Press called about the modern DBA, and that will be coming in the next few months. I don't like to talk a little bit much about marketing, but I would like to just say that my company, CloudDB, is a global professional and managed services, not only for Oracle technologies, it's for most of the RDBMS, NoSQL environment, open source databases such as MySQL, uh, MariaDB, Postgres, and so on. We have many community leaders uh, working with uh, as members of our team. We have a few Oracle ACES, ACE Directors, Oracle Certified Masters, Microsoft MPPs, Microsoft, Microsoft MCMs, some AWS solutions, architects, developers, and so on. That means uh, we have a, a very good uh, uh, knowledge about many technologies and many senior people and community leaders working with us. Our main office is in Brisbane, Australia, headquarters. We have offices also in Sydney, Perth, in Auckland, New Zealand, in San Francisco, United States. We also have clients all around the globe that we support with real follow the sun. And that includes Singapore, Korea, Japan, uh, Russia, Kazakhstan, India, Europe, United States, and so on. And we also have a group of uh, uh, employees uh, supporting these environments from all around the globe also. But saying that, let's go straight to the point of what we're going to be talking today. My main goal today is just talk about database technologies all around, especially for DBAs, database administrators, and talk a little bit, starting with the evolution of IT, the past, the present, and the future of the uh, uh, database career, and what's next, next, and finish with a full review and conclusion. Okay, let's talk about the evolution of a, a career. You will see many changes. Uh, I, have, I have seen many changes since I started. I basically identified myself with the cartoon in the middle. When I started on my careers in the, in the 
late eighties, I was like that cartoon, very skinny and young, and now I'm a little bit fatter and and older. And my computer, of course, went the other way. But IT have evolved a lot since I started. As per example, if we start talking about evolution of IT in general, we will see that everything is started with the uh, human computers back in the 40s to the 70s. Um, even the, uh, a movie recently was uh, uh, released showing the history about this, when basically we have the human computers working for NASA and they were very scared with the changes on their profession with the implementation of IBM for as IBM mainframe there's going to be the supercomputer that will replace all that people. And that was the start of the main evolution of the computer systems. Then with the general mindframes starting to replace the human computers uh, between the 60s to the 80s, we, uh, we talk a lot about IBM and the big iron. When we talk about that, you can see in this picture just the big fuss with the delivery of a five megabytes hard drive from IBM back on 1956. You could see how big was the technology, the hardware, and how the things were changing. If you take a look on how the size of uh, you have a one terabyte external hard drive, it's very simple, and even the pen drives. We, in, even with the mindframes, we have that kind of work with the tapes. We have the uh, operators working and maintaining these environments, working from the consoles. And that was very frequent and common to a lot of people uh, uh, upon us at the moment. Then in the 80s, we have the distributed technology being, uh, being introduced and it starts to separate that two words between people and computers. We start having our terminals to be introduced as that we started to work uh, separately. We need to be in, in the work in the consoles anymore. This was a big change in a big steps, especially with the computers it's starting to connect as a multi-layer that we have the PCs connected to the, uh, the, uh, the central computer and so on. But if we take a look at the evolution of IT, since it started in the 40s up to, to today in 2020, we will see all the changes that happen, starting with the human computers, moving to the mainframes, then moving to the client servers. Then we started with the private cloud. And a lot of people ask me, Francisco, what do you mean with private cloud? In 2010, we have a boom and a rush to the people to start virtualizing their own data centers. When you virtualize your own data centers, basically what you achieve is create your own private cloud. That was the start of the cloud technology, but inside your own firewalls, inside your own data centers. That was the boom that started with the virtual era back in 2010. Then we start with uh, other companies start to push, especially with AWS uh, as uh, the big initial push to implement public cloud. A lot of people started to play around and start working with what we call hybrid cloud, having most of the work and the workload on their private clouds and some they were playing with non-production environment, especially in the public cloud, creating what we call hybrid clouds, a mix of stuff on premises and and uh, other stuff in the public cloud. By 2020, <coughs> we expect that most of the people will be using a uh, public cloud and stop to using most of their things on private cloud or hybrid clouds. That's basically what most of the people is expecting to happen. And, and that's why it's something that we need to take a look and see how the things uh, evolve. If, if we just give a step back and take a look at the evolution of IT and put now my, my shoes as a database administrator that I have done for most of the time, if you step back, you will remember in the 80s, a, a lot of change for developers is starting to work that way too. Most of the developers I knew in that time were working with technologies such as, let's say, Cobol, 
And with the 2YK coming, a lot of things, a lot of the other technology is starting to be implemented. In that moment, um, a lot of people start working with something new called SQL SQL. And, and the people were saying now, that's not the future, Cobo is. And that people, they stay working with the old technologies they become the dinosaurs with the future uh, compare uh, if we compare what's happening uh, next because they didn't want it to evolve and they started slowly to extinguish and be extinct and that's something that a lot of people is asking would, would that happen to dbas also because with impl implementation evolution, and evolution of IT, with implementation of cloud technologies, uh, autonomous database environments, such as people call RDS of Oracle autonomous databases, will do that affect your career? And that is a big, big, big question that we have and many people is doing. If we take a look in the past, as I mentioned, as me being a DBA, you will see that when I started my career back in the late 80s, uh, I started as a mentioned as a developer. When we started working with Oracle databases at that moment, uh, we not even knew that a database administrator was required. It was basically assuming the technology was just running in the background by itself and we just need to uh, uh, keep developing programs and working and that's it. In that time, I was working with technologies such as Oracle Forms, Oracle Report, Oracle Case, Oracle Menu, and so on. And basically, with the time, we discovered the database and are efficient, but they are not that efficient, that they need someone to maintain the technology properly to ensure the availability, recoverability of the data and, and allow the uh, uh, things run smoothly and that's when i started to work as a dba i was the first dba from brazil and one of the first dbas of latin america i was also the first oracle certified master from latin america and i was a member of the first team to introduce oracle in that moment to brazil and in that time when I was working as a DBA, it was something very simple. We're just working with one or two databases, very small ones. The main issues were that as a DBA, I was working at different times of the teams because most of the work that I was able to do, backup, defragmentations, and so on, would need to be done with the database down. That means at night uh, and weekends, and that's what I was working with. Then, as a DBA, we start to see a lot of changes that was happening and new technologies were introduced, especially if you're a database administrator, we start to see if you are just giving us a reference a few things with Oracle, we start having things as reapplication cluster, clusterization is start to be implemented, software to manage the storage as ASM, autonomous storage management, is starting to be uh, implemented, uh, monitoring and managing tools, graphic tools, good that allow you to do things more easily instead to know the, uh, uh, the command line interface and know how to do the things by yourself. A lot of things is starting to be implemented that uh, change the way your career was going. Especially if you think, uh, another thing that with the, the years you were supposed to learn was learn how the applications work, how they interact with the database, that way when an issue happens, you know how it happens. We start to become a more architect than a database only. We start to become sysadmins, network admins, user admins, and many other things because we start gaining a lot more responsibility. And even with database technologies itself, uh, many companies, especially managers, start to acquire new products, new softwares, new applications without paying attention in the database technology in the background. And then you start ending up with other databases to manage a SQL service, Progress, MySQL, and so on. And when we raise our hands to complain, look, I'm an Oracle DBA and this is not Oracle databases or I'm a SQL DBA and this is not a SQL database. Uh, why I need to look after? 
they will reply, your manager will reply to you, look, your contract says you are a database administration, DBA, this is a database, now is your responsibility. And that the things are starting to, to grow and grow with more responsibilities, uh, it starts to be uh, uh, added to our profession as a database administrator. The, with, the, sorry, apologies. with the present, a lot of changes start to be implemented in our career. If you take in consideration uh, with the implementation of cloud technologies, automation, so many different things start to be used that a lot of people think that our professional start to deviate it, and we are becoming, as I mentioned, I'll give as an example before with developers with COBOL, we are going close to extinction and we are the next dinosaurs, uh, basically, in the technology world. And I can tell that, as a reference, that could be true in some level, but that's not in my opinion. If you pay attention, we have AWS, they have implemented RDS, and a lot of people think, oh, we've used the, my company is starting to use the RDS, they will out manage itself, and DBAs will not be required. Oh my gosh, I need to start looking for a new job or start to change or evolve or merging in something else different. My personal experience with RDS is I love RDS. Why? because I'm making more money, I have more work supporting RDS environments than never before. Why? Because this technology was supposed to come to be, uh, replace most of the DBA work, but that's what we're supposed to do, but that's not what is exactly happening. If you take a look on what they do basically they are supposed to be locked supposed to be uh, uh, managed by itself but they limited so much the things happening around uh, what you can do that performance is not always as expected or always easy to manage as it was done on premises or as, as you can do when using something as infrastructure as a service that you can basically fully deploy in the cloud your applications, your databases, but you have a full control of everything. Uh, you still have an access to the OS, you still have an access to everything you need it, but with RDS not you now have limited uh, database accounts, you have parameters, uh, uh, limitations of what you can set and do, and that now you need to, you require a, spew, uh, a special skill set to manage that environment and to make that be more efficient. And the amount of people available in the market that know what to do and how to manage that kind of environments, it's not that many people available that have that knowledge. That means now you will become specialized on that and you can make more money and you'll become even more essential than before. That uh, is something that needs to be taken in consideration about that kind of technologies. I had a session that was given for many years called uh, Tips and Best Practices for DBAs. And one of my tips was of uh, most importance after backup, backup, and backup. I always do a backup before a change, I always do a backup after a change, was automation. Automate it, everything you can automate it, do it, because you have more important things to do it. If you cannot automate something, delegate, that's why you have junior DBAs and other people that can look after the environment for you. Because again, you have more important things to do. Most of the issues that management have with DBAs is they always, when they require things to DBAs, they, are, they don't have a time, they're not busy, or they're not available to do things. Why? Because they are a lot, very busy in doing what we call business as usual. They're always doing the same things over and over and over. Especially if you're not proactive, you are a reactive DBA, you will end up being a firefighter, uh, taking that fire out and another one is on and so on. <clears throat> then when <clears throat> a critical uh, uh, 
project is going to be implemented, is a strategic project in the pipeline, you basically never available, you know, and that start causing a lot of issues with management and see why I'm paying this person, person that's never available. <coughs> Apologies for my cough. That's why uh, you need to change. In my experience, I can tell you that at the present, we have two types of DBAs, what we I will call DBOs and DBAs. DBOs are database operators. That is DBAs is still doing the same business as usual as always, keeping their time is just doing the same thing over and over and over. And then you have the DBAs that do not mean anymore database administrators, they means database architects, in my opinion. That's the people that automated most of the things that they could automate. Why? To focus on the, in the strategic projects for the company and try to achieve it before a better return of, of investment, more availability, more recoverability, more security, and so on. And, and that's what you need to start thinking. That's the present of the, 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 your profession. You need to think if you are a DBO, or you're going in the database operator direction, or you're doing going in the database architect direction. If you're going to go to the database architect direction, you need to give that step back and start looking on better options to your company. If you take a look on this uh, uh, information from Database Maestro that Oracle uh, uh, talk a lot about, you will see that DBAs spend much of their time in these areas, maintenance, security, and reliability, where 72% of IT batch budgets are spent on generic maintenance tasks versus innovation. 85% uh, of security breaches occur after the CVA was published, and 91% experience unplanned data center outages because the environments are not reliable. If you take in average, a database downtime costs around 7,900 US dollars per minute. That's from database maestro information. And this is the time, uh, this is areas that we basically spend too much time in maintenance. If you take a look, we are not able to innovate. We are not able to focus on security properly. And we are not able to properly uh, guarantee the reliability, availability, of our environments, especially of the data. If you think about that, remember, the data is the new oil, and we, as database architects, are the new uh, uh, people that will be able to focus in how to keep that data secure, available, reliable, and recoverable for everyone in the company. We need to manage that oil properly. And that's the thing that you need to start changing your mind and start focus on. You need to focus your mind and start becoming that architect, not anymore an operator. Operators can be easy replaced, architects not. You need to start to be more strategic to your company and start to think on ways that you can uh, uh, give you more return of investment to you to your business, if not, you'll be in trouble. But other questions that a lot of people ask me is, Francisco, is the DBA professional going down? Is this people starting to uh, hire DBAs? If it, uh, that's not true. If you take a look at statistics from the United States in 2016, the database profession is still one of the most important and high demand occupations uh, uh, in United States. You can see that is a faster than average, the job outlook with 11% uh, uh, growth. A uh, number of jobs being published in 2016 was 119,500 in the United States as an example, and high pay. And that was in 2016. If you look in, in May 2017, when everybody was saying already, starting to say that DBAs would be obsolete, they continue to grow, still being of a high demand uh, um, uh, profession. The number of employees is too high, 113,000 people looking right there, which is in the United States. Have plenty of statistics 
if you go to the computer science hub, you will see that DBA profession is still on high demand globally. But you need to think that DBAs are not anymore database administrators. They are being required to be more architect kind of things. They need to have a new skill set. So they need to include things like cloud computing, network security, and so on. And that's the things you need to be aware of. If I just go here in Australia, for example, just Google database administrator in Australia, we are as a big country with a small population when compared with the United States, but you can see 5,800 job openings just for database administrations here in Australia. Uh, the pay, the pay is very high. It's still one of the professions with, with the best pay, uh, payments in IT. But you can see the popular skill sets for senior database administrators are growing. They require you to have a multi uh, uh, technologies uh, uh, background, uh, OS level uh, knowledge with Linux, Unix, Windows, so on. You need to have a cloud technology a little bit of DevOps, a little bit of machine learning and so on. More skill sets, better chances to grow and better pay rates too. And that's the things that you will find that database administrators are still on high demand globally at the moment. As part of the present, as I mentioned, you need to have knowledge about cloud computing. That's not a maybe, that's not a, a, a good to have, that is a full requirement that you need to have now at the moment. You need to know what offerings Amazon AWS has, Azure, Google Cloud Platform, Oracle. That's the four most used cloud computing providers around the world. You need to understand what infrastructure as a service uh, is, what platform as a service is, what SaaS is, and what offerings for infrastructure as a service, PaaS and SaaS, each cloud providers have. That is something that you need to start investing your time, start to get in some training, start to get in certified. Cloud is not the future anymore, we are already there. And that's what we need to be prepared and learn most what we can. Together with cloud computing and cloud experience, automation is part of the future. As I mentioned before, you should automate everything you can. Why? Because you have more important things to do. If you don't do the things that are important to your company, you will become the next dinosaur. And we don't want that to happen. That's why you need to start thinking about automation very, very seriously. You have many products, many tools that you can work with, and that's when you start talking about Git, GitHub, uh, products about source control, like I mentioned Git and GitHub, uh, automation tools, DevOps, and so on. Those are things that are not uh, a joke anymore. As part of the evolution of the DBA and the database developer role, uh, you need to learn that you need to become a data engineer. As I mentioned, the data is the new oil. You need to be strong, we need to have a strong knowledge on data security. That's a must also. You should also concentrate and learn about machine learning. Machine learning, blockchain, that's uh, technologies that are starting to be embedded in the database technologies more and more. And that's something that you should be looking if you're not looking already. And also start working with application tuning about improving this, the SQL, uh, connection management and so on to be uh, uh, the application connectivity to your data more efficient. That's important things. As I mentioned, you need to focus in the future now, and the future is very close. That means you should start looking at this right now, not take your time anymore. If not, you will become basically obsolete very soon. Again, start looking on DevOps, start looking containers, start looking on cloud computing, automation, big data, this kind of technology, source control, source versioning, all these things are very, very important 
and are the skill sets that every database architect should know and have in your pocket. A lot of people tell me, is the future unknown? No, the future is not unknown. The future is very, very known. And the future is now, basically. It's about everything, uh, 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 about uh, uh, the examples I've already given to you. If you would just look back and start my presentation, I, I spoke about the hidden figures, the movie, movie that talked about the human computers in NASA being replaced by the uh, mainframe from IBM. I really recommend you to watch that movie if you have not seen yet. You will see how the human computers were always care uh, about losing their jobs. You have a few innov innovator people uh, among them they starting to see an opportunity instead of a threat with the implementation of the uh, mindframe. The IBM people was had an amazing product. There was a faster way to do things than the human computers at a lower cost, but they had issues at making that thing work. Even with all the technology and capability, it was not working for NASA. That's where the human computers uh, notice that they have one thing that machines did not have. They had one thing that the new technology did not have at all. And what was that? Knowledge of the business. Then they, they, they discovered if they start learning coding and become developers, they will be able to transfer that knowledge of the business to that new technology, the hardware, to make that thing work properly as expected. That's where basically IBM hired all the human computers to become the new programmers and making, uh, uh, sharing that knowledge of the business made that technology work efficiently as expected. And that's the same for the DBAs today. We have new tools, new toys, new technologies, <coughs> but they are useless without the knowledge of the business. And we, the old DBAs, the new database architectures, have that knowledge on our brains. And we need to start using that to be able to, together with these new tools that we have been given, we can make our careers and your future very, very successful. When we talk about the future, a lot of people confuse automation versus autonomous. Automation is one thing, autonomous is another thing. Uh, if you take uh, one idea, automation is what we use it to make things uh, uh, basically automated, and automation is they do by themselves. Let's take you one example. Uh, a couple years back, I bought a new car, and my car have a lot of automations uh, embedded on it. As for example, they automatically turn on the lights when they detect that it's getting dark. They automatically uh, uh, turn on the wipes if they start detecting they start raining and it's, and also change the setting of the speed depending on how heavily the raining is. My cruise control now is automated cruise control that they keep the distance, they brake for the car in front of me, brake, they uh, increase the velocity, they do everything by itself without me doing nothing. They do everything by itself. You have even assisting parking that I can press a button and my car park by itself. If you take a look on now these things, these automation features on my car are not there to remove the pleasure of driving my car, but is to make it more safer, reduce risk. That means I can enjoy the travel even more when my car is doing a lot of things for me to keep me safe and be uh, enable me to get to my destination without issues and enjoy my family, my kids, and so on. That's basically the same concept when you apply to IT. All the automation products you have, all the automation you can deploy, will make reduce, will reduce risk because we humans do mistakes, but will release you more time to focus on things that are more important to your business, more important to your career. If I go and ask you, of uh, John, and 
have, were you able to learn a little bit about cloud computing? Because you would not respond to me, I don't have time. No, because I don't have time. Now with automation, you can make that time. If I ask you about a, a other example of uh, the things you can do with automation is automate, automate your backups, automating the user requests, automating deployments, auto, many things you can do that can make it release a lot of time and reduce risk. But note, this automation do not mean autonomous. Autonomous in the same example I give you to the car is a car that drive itself. They have a lot, using most of the automation tools that we have there, but they go even further and they drive it itself. That means the driver is not required anymore. And that's two different things. If we talk about Oracle Database, Oracle Database 18C, Oracle Database 19C, Oracle Database 12C, they are not autonomous. They have plenty of automation uh, embedded on them, but they're not autonomous. Oracle had autonomous databases, called, uh, autonomous data warehouse, ATP, and so on. That's the transactional one. They are autonomous, but they are a hybrid of the Oracle technology plus much more automation to make it that fully autonomous. But their automation and autonomous are two different things they need to be aware of. And make it easy. Automation minimizing human inter interaction, minimizing manual steps, scripting, and so on. Autonomous is a full automation with no human, uh, human interaction required at all. That's very important. And again, I want to make an emphasis of cloud is the inevitable next steps in the database architect DNA evolution or the DBA evolution. And you need to be focused a lot or learn about cloud technology, especially networking, security, storage, and so on. That's key and is essential. And not only one technology. Go and start learning, getting certified across all the major players in cloud. I'll talk and go and learn about AWS, go and learn about Azure, go and learn about uh, uh, Google, go and learn about Oracle Cloud, and so on. <coughs> you can see when we talk about cloud, if you take an imagine, uh, magic quadrants for data management solutions for analytics, that's what the part that we talk with machine learning and how the business intelligence and so on. Oracle is the leader on that quadrant, followed by Microsoft, AWS, SAP, Teradata, and so on. If you talk about uh, infrastructure as a services, we will see now that only we have three major players right there, AWS, Microsoft, and Google, and we have um, uh, another challenger such as Alibaba, Oracle, IBM. In infrastructure as a services, we only have uh, basically six serious players, not as you have with BI and analytics, with data management that we have tons of uh, many players in the market. And you will see a lot more in the database management systems when you have Microsoft, Oracle, AWS, and SAP, and IBM in the, as leaders on that magic quadrant. It's, you will see that where, when we talk about where most of the workloads are running at the moment, today versus uh, 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 2020 expectations, you will see today 37% of the um, workloads are running on premises. They were expected that by 2020 in the past will be only 27%. We'll see most, we have, um, uh, we still have a lot of workload on premises. Public cloud, we are expected the 41% will be by 2020, but today we have a 31%. And so on when we compare a very similar situations, private cloud and hybrid cloud. We will see the things that's changing and we will start changing faster and faster and faster. Especially the current pandemic situation, employees uh, start working remotely and so on. You will see more things managing uh, to the, moving to the cloud even faster. Uh, public cloud challenging. If you compare in the past, a lot of people was talking a lot about, okay, how is the security in the cloud? governance and compliance, cloud expertise, expertise privacy, very locking, locking costs, 
that was the main challenges that the people were seeing in the past. Today, this is the past. The people don't care too much about security because they know the cloud computing companies invest tons of more money than we could do ourselves. They already fully compliance for governance and compliance. They have, we have tons of cloud expertise in the market at the moment. Privacy is taken very seriously, especially with GDPR, PCI, and many other compliances in the market. And the cost is already showing that it's cost efficient. So if that is the past, now the people are starting to focus on understanding cost implications of software licenses. The license rules complexities when applying the cloud, because the license on premises is not the same the license in the cloud. That means that's starting to be a challenge to understand how I can migrate my current license when I move to the cloud and things like that. You will see that license is the most challenging uh, uh, when moving to the cloud uh, uh, that the companies have at the moment. <clears throat> when 95% of the workloads will be running in the cloud. When we're asking people about that, 6% think they will be in one year, but 20% think they will be in 10 years, five years, 27, and so on. That means you will see that that will not take that long to have 95% of the company workloads in the cloud. That means that show you how little time you have to be prepared learning these technologies to ensure that you have a job in the future. And 95% of the respondent of the cloud report from Flexera report they are using cloud in, uh, at the moment, where you will be seeing that 22% are using public cloud only, 3% are using private cloud only, and 69% is using hybrid cloud. That means you can see 91% of public, 72% uh, uh, when they do the crossover with private. Again, the growing cloud user, you see that usage of uh, private cloud uh, grow is shrinking, where the usage of public cloud is going up. The, the spending on cloud is also going up, that you, you will see basically everywhere. The multi-cloud uh, multi strategy year per year over year is growing more and more. The enterprise cloud strategy is growing for companies over a thousand plus uh, uh, employees when 58% using hybrid cloud and basically 84% using multi-cloud. And what's next? I will say if I can give you some tips to improve your career as a database administrator or now as a database architect will be to focus on a few soft skills also as change your attitude showing a proper attitude and show why you're different of everybody else will show your your boss why you deserve that raise, why you deserve that new uh, opportunity or why you're so critical to the company if you don't show a proper attitude, just be one of the, uh, the people going with the wave, that will show the company that you're not essential and basically you can be easily uh, replaced. Uh, you need to learn how to do research properly too. Look for manuals, look, done, uh, look for a, a other kind of information in the, uh, available uh, to you. And uh, also know how to uh, interact with your peers, like in events, like conferences, you start to doing networking. And because the main goal when you go to that event is for exchanging of knowledge, because knowledge is only valuable when exchange it. That means you will learn from new speakers, you will interact and do networking with your peers. And you will find people that is already already implemented technologies they are looking to implement that they can give you some tips and also you can work vice versa. In the future, it can help other people too. <clears throat> that know how to do this research is a key process for your su success. Please do not go to the, uh, to the uh, forums and start dropping out your uh, 
your issues over there and expect people to solve them to yourself that show you that you had a bad attitude and don't know how to do research. Do not use the Sun Google to solve all your issues and never believe it on everything that was published that you read in the internet or in books or so on. Why? Because something that happened to me or uh, worked for me or worked for anybody else in a book on in the internet work for them, but not necessarily will work for you. Why? Because there's so many variables in the middle that could affect the result, that the result could be not expected. That means if you want to ensure that something really works, please apply that solution in a non-production environment, please. And if that works properly, then apply in your UIT and then apply in production. But do not believe it 100% on everything you read or see or were told or you hear without try by yourself first. Also, as a key point to your success, do not be afraid to innovate. Innovation is very important and you not be afraid to implement technologies such as machine learning, uh, uh, a lot of DevOps automation, and so on. Use it, because that will show you that you're doing a proper attitude and will show why you are important to the business. And finally, learn to properly communicate. Most of the time when a user comes with an issue, we stop listening after they start telling what the problem is because we start thinking the solution before fully understand the issue. Albert Einstein said once, if I had one hour to, solve the, uh, to save the world, I will spend 55 minutes understanding the problem and then I will use the five minutes of the solution. Why? Because when you fully understand the problem, the solution comes like this. If you do not understand the problem, you will start doing the try and error, try and error, try and error, because you did not understand the root problem properly. And with the combination with a proper attitude, learning to be researched, being innovative, know how to properly communicate, communicate and listen, they, you, that's the main tools that will help you to achieve the success in your future. Um, also learn to be proactive. Do not wait problems to become a problem to you start working up on. You start being proactive and solve them before they become a problem. That will save a lot tons of money to your company and also time to yourself. Then instead to be, be a firefighter, now you do not be to spend your time putting a fire down and you can use that time better, for something better. Educate and prepare yourself for the future. Learn to manage different RDBMS technologies like MySQL, SQL Server, DB2, and so on. Learn about NoSQL database, Cassandra, Mongo, Maria, and so on. How to uh, resolve unavailable issues. Uh, execute recovery tests to learn uh, if your data, data is recoverable, if your backups are useful, and document the process, but anyone in the company can use it. I have a crash tool that simulates crashes for Oracle on my website called Crash Simulator. You can play with that too. Ensure that all is that your company RPO and RTO SALAs are being fulfilled. Many companies have no idea if the, the RPO and RTO are being fulfilled for the environments, and many DBAs do not even know what they are the SLAs for that for your companies. We remember RPO is recovery point objective and RTO recovery time objective. That means how much data can you lose in case of disaster and how much time can a company afford to be down. You need to gain deep knowledge and performance tuning. You need to learn about how the application works to know how they interact with your database. You need to uh, uh, learn how to review and implement security efficiently on premises and in the cloud. Keep your database trend technologies knowledge, and, and technologies uh, and knowledge up to date. Learn about Kafka, microservices, containers, virtualization, and DevOps by yourself. So many things you should be looking. These are only example. Learn about Python, about uh, Java. Learn about a. Uh, uh, Cloud technologies I mentioned many times. So many things uh, you can notice that you should be 
focus. And that's why automation is so important to allow you to have time to focus on this in your screen right now. Some example, what's next? I will tell you to, uh, after this presentation, start looking on tools like Ansible, GitLab or Git, uh, Vagrant, Confluence, and also check in our website, CloudDBs, the solutions for automation framework for uh, help DBAs to automate things on their databases. <clears throat> and saying that, that's basically what I have to say today. Apologies if I rush a little bit with the topic. It's a huge topic with a lot of information we could be discussing. I try to speed up a little bit to give us time for a Q&A in case you have any questions. And please feel free to ask me any questions that you could have. And after that, I would like to say also thank you. Thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope uh, I will, uh, you can come with uh, many questions. I'm here to respond that to you. And please don't be afraid of the future. The future is still very interesting and we need to make a good usage of the business knowledge that we have. That is our diamond that you need to make uh, value with your organization. Thank you so much.